Hey guys, uh, my name is Ariane and welcome back to another episode of The Trans Atheist. Today we're starting out with Season 2 and in this case we're going to be talking about a phone call that I did on a call-on show on a station called American Family Radio. This particular show was called The Awakening with Bishop E.W. Jackson. I really encourage you look up E.W. Jackson. He's a perennial candidate in the state of Virginia. Um, he spent a lot of time on his show making transphobic comments. He does every episode, really. And I attempted to call in, and amazingly, somehow, the call screeners actually let me through. We'll start off with the call, and then we'll get my response afterwards. Let's go to Ari in Ohio. Ari, welcome. Hello. Thank you, Bishop. First-time caller. Welcome to the program. Thanks. Um, just kind of wanted to mention, you know, I, I know all across the country we're seeing things um, like the SAFE Act. Uh, I know here in Ohio it's been introduced by Gary Click. And, you know, growing up in the South, you know, part of the thing that was instilled in me both as, you know, a value of America and a value of Christianity itself was respect for each other. And when we have programs like this that constantly demonize trans people, we don't see respect there. I think it's shameful the way that we've done with trying to make trans people the target so that we can get out of the fact that Republicans have no solutions for problems. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, well, Ari, thank you for the call. But look, <laughs> so here, here's the thing about that, folks. Christians didn't start the controversy over trans anything. We've been believing the way we've been believing for 2,000 years. And then along comes somebody says, well, guess what? Your child's not a boy. Your child's not a girl. Uh, that's just a, an assignment by a stupid doctor who's and, and telling children all he could do was guess. I mean, yeah, Ari, the controversy is on the gender confused people, the sexually perverse people, the sexually immoral people, the godless people, the anti-Christian people who want to fight to transform the society to reflect their own amorality and their own godlessness and their own anti-Christian bigotry. And so, yeah, are we standing up against it? You better believe it and not apologizing for it. Thank you for the call. Okay, let's go so to that was the call. Um, so to start off with, let's let's address a couple of issues. Like, how did I get on the show? Well, I called in. I did not misrepresent myself, but I also did not tell them that I was trans or that I'm an atheist. I let them assume what they wanted to assume. The call screener asked me what I wanted to talk about. I said I wanted to talk about trans issues and the laws going across the country uh, to ban trans health care. And they let me through. So when I got on there, I said what I had to say. I stopped. And the thing about it is when he starts talking, you, um, if you, I mean, I heard other people, they had a back and forth conversation. There was no back and forth on ours. The moment he started talking, I was muted. I was allowed to say nothing else at that point. I was talking a lot in my phone, but of course you're not going to hear that on the radio or on the broadcast because they blocked me out. So he says that when it comes to trans issues, that quote, Christians didn't start the controversy. Well, I'm going to have to beg to differ on that uh, because while he says that Christians have been believing the way we believe for 2,000 years, trans people have been existing since the beginning of time. So. Trans identities exist long before the formation of Christianity or Islam or Judaism or any religious tradition that I'm familiar with. Um, they did, in fact, start the controversy here in the United States because trans people were simply fighting for the right to exist. That's what we continue to fight for, the right to be ourselves, the right to um, you know, not be under the burden of of these laws. And when you see the laws passed in a lot of these states, they do include an element of religious language. The one here in Ohio that I referenced in the call that was put up by Gary Click. So a thing about that, Gary Click, by reports that I have seen in the news, 
did not, in fact, write that law. He presented it, but he didn't write it. Gary Click got that law handed to him by a group in Ohio, a Christian lobbying group, called the Center for Christian Virtue. But Christians didn't start the controversy. Yeah, no, that's not how it works. They did, in fact, start the controversy. They started the controversy when they started writing laws to try to write trans people out of existence, to try to st strip civil rights from trans people, and to try to instill some sort of Christo-fascist, Christian nationalism state. So, talks about, you know, saying, well, they're telling you, telling you that your child is not a boy, your child is not a girl. We are not talking about telling people what their child is. That's not even what trans medicine has to do with, with children. It's about trans kids telling you what they are. It's about internal identities, not somebody imposing something on someone, not somebody saying your kid is going to be trans. No, it's about when your kid says they are trans, when they identify themselves, going for the proper treatment. And that treatment does not involve, as you will see in a little snippet from callers afterwards that he engaged in, that does not involve surgery. It is not saying that, well, the kids get to decide what they want. That doesn't happen. Kids don't decide what type of trans medicine, as, we, as they would want to say, or as we would say, um, they don't decide that. What happens with a trans kid is, number one, you are dealing with a lot of psychiatrists and therapists involved before it ever moves forward. You're dealing with doctors. You're dealing with consultations. It is a long process for a kid to get on any type of trans-affirming care. Most of the time, trans care for minors, especially children, is nothing more than somebody going by a different name and changing their clothing. There's not much medical involved, except for perhaps therapy to help them process their feelings, to help them deal with dysphoria, to help them um, deal with the discrimination that they're very likely to encounter, not necessarily from other kids when we're dealing with smaller kids, but mostly from the adults. Trans medicine, on occasion for kids will involve some sort of medical intervention, and that medical intervention would involve something like a puberty blocker, which is not in the cards until much later in the process. Eventually, when we're dealing with, you know, puberty, and we've got the puberty blockers, there will be a conversation about um, whether or not to do hormones, HRT. But, again, that is a long discussion that is not something that is done without parental consent. Nobody just comes home, you know, or is going to school and somebody's giving them HRT without their parents' knowledge. It doesn't happen. It's a damn lie. Most of this is. Now, talking about um, when he starts referring to us as gender-confused, well, I'm not gender confused. Perhaps you're confused about my gender, but I'm pretty clear about it. I am a trans woman. Proud of it. Not ashamed. Not confused. Was confused for quite some time. Many, many years. 34 of them, to be exact, that I lived in confusion. And during that time frame, I was miserable. Until I transitioned. Now I'm not. Then he says, sexually perverse. Well, I honestly don't know what the hell that even means, because they use that to mean just about anything. If it's not a cisgender Christian couple, then it's sexually perverse to them. Frankly, my sex life is none of their business. Neither are the sex lives of any trans people, any, you know, LGBT people in general. Sexually immoral. Okay, well, their version of immorality is based on the concept of sin, and their concept of sin is an offense to a god. I could care less about what their god thinks, therefore, sexually immoral doesn't mean shit to me. Godless. Okay, you got me there. Yeah, definitely godless, because so far I've seen no evidence to support that there is a god. Provide it, and I'll be more than happy to reconsider. An anti-Christian. Well, in general, I wouldn't consider myself anti-Christian. I am, however, anti-Christian nationalism. Now, am I an anti-theist? 
Yeah, probably. I don't think that belief in a God benefits society, generally speaking. I don't think it's sound reasoning. Uh, but overall, I don't mind if someone believes something. You can believe that being trans is wrong. You can believe that being gay is wrong. You can believe that having an abortion is wrong. I don't care. I care when you take those religious beliefs and you start writing them into our laws. We have something called the separation of church and state, and the right-wingers want to deny that that exists. It does, in fact, exist, whether they want to admit it or not. And the fact of the matter is, is that what they are doing is a version of theocracy. E.W. Jackson, that is his whole platform, theocratic rule over the United States. And I hate to be the one to tell you, but not only is that not good for atheists, that's not good for trans people, but here's the thing. It's also not good for Christians because right now it's overarching Christian. But then what happens when it becomes, well, the theocracy that we're going to endorse is only going to follow Baptist theology. So now you Pentecostals, we're going to take care of you because you are just as bad as those other heretics. Or, you know, Catholics, well, now we're coming after you. We were good working with you while you were helping us on this whole abortion front, but now we want to come after you as well. Well, that's the issue. Theocracy doesn't help anyone. Now, talking about the way his program is, I'm going to give you one last little snippet that he throws in here, and then I'll go to a closing. So let's go to that. It's not just he, she, or even they, them, it is now you've got a pronoun called Z, and I think they've got, there's another one too. There might be two or three others. In other words, just made up words, but Z-E is one of them. Yeah, so now you can see every part of his show, he was working in trans stuff wherever he could, talking about made up words when he talks about neo-pronouns. I don't know how to help you understand this, but every word is made up. You know, that's kind of how we get language. We make up words. Ultimately, they're just a bunch of grunting sounds in order to communicate an idea among one form of the greater apes. This is what happens. This is language. But I don't expect him to understand that because I'm sure he also believes that all language came from the Tower of Babel and that's how we get differences in language. Utter bullshit if you were, you know, not already clear on that. But anyway, this is just the first little bit on our very first episode of Season 2 of The Trans Atheist. I encourage you to subscribe. Present me with ideas that you have for future videos. We're very interested in hearing what you would like to see. Um, I may try to do some more call-ins if I can get a hold of some of these different people on here. But um, if you're able to look it up... Uh, Tune in to American Family Radio, but if you do, make sure you're in the right headspace. And feel free to call in if they have a call-in show. They're open to the public. They want people to share their opinions, so share it. Let them know that their hate doesn't represent your state. And above all, I was talking about the bill with Gary Click here in Ohio. Um, if you live in a state where these bills are coming up, contact your legislator. Let them know that the hatred instilled in this bill, in these bills, does not represent who you are. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. I am the Trans Atheist, and hopefully you'll come back for another episode. Hit the subscribe button, which actually I think is going to be down here on the screen. And um, let us know what you think. Leave your comments, leave your suggestions, leave your criticisms. I'll probably be snarky right back if you are. <laughs> and I may use them in a future show, so you never know. Have a great day, and until the next episode, bye-bye.